Hi everyone, in this video we will compare CPU Intel Xeon E52678 version 3 in a stock against unlocked turbo boost. I already made detailed video about this CPU, so you can find it on my channel. As I told you before, this is a very special CPU, which working with the dirt tree memory, has pretty fair price, many cores and threads and amazing high clock. Let's review only main specifications. CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads, clock in a stock 2.5 and in a boost 3.2. 3 and boost for all cores 2.9 GHz. We will force it to work it on 3.3 for all cores. Cache level 3 30 MB. CPU on LJ2011 version 3. Test stand is motherboard Plex HD 99. Graphic card AMD RX 5700 XT. Memory RAM 16 gigs of DDR4. Working on 2133 MHz. All games running from SSD storage. If you like that video, please subscribe on my channel, smash like and comment. All useful links as always in description. Let's start from Cinebench R20. In a stock our CPU reaching 3776 points. In a boost CPU has 3945 points. Profit is not high here. Next test is CPU Queen. In a stock CPU has 82 833 points. In a boost CPU has 94 669 points. In CPU Z in a stock we have for single core 325 points, for multi core 4849 points. In a boost for single core 370 points and multi core 54 13 points. Benchmark test from Passmark. In a stock CPU has 17 219 points. For single core 16 88 points. In a boost we have 19 279 points. And for single core 19 77 points. First game on our test is GTA 5. The highest settings and full HD resolution. In a stock we have minimum 70 and an average 88 FPS. In a boost we have minimum 82 and an average 93 FPS. In terms of minimum FPS, we have a nice difference. Second game is Watch Dogs 2 Ultra Settings and Full HD Resolution. In a stock, we have minimum 49 and an average 59 FPS. In a boost, CPU has minimum 50 and 62 FPS on average. Difference is small here. Next game in our test is Battlefield 5. Middle settings, DirectX 12 and Full HD resolution. In a stock we have minimum 118 and in average we have 157 FPS. In a boost CPU reach minimum 123 and in average 164 FPS. The difference is not high here. Next game in our test is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Middle settings, Full HD and DirtX 12. In a stock we have minimum 63 and an average 92 FPS. In a boost we have, and I forgot display monitoring, but in average we have 99 FPS. In a both ways everything is okay. Next game on our test is Metro Exodus, middle settings, full HD and RTX 12. CPU in a stock has minimum 51 and 67 FPS in average. In a boost we have minimum 53 and 73 FPS in average. FPS rows not high, but everything is ok in a both ways. Last game on our test is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Benchmark test and high settings. In the stock we have minimum 53 and in average 62, maximum 98 FPS. In a boost we have minimum 56, in average 66 and maximum 108 FPS. We have a nice max FPS difference here. If 
rewards at the end of the video. So is Turbo Boost uh, hack necessary here? It gives us a nice profit, not high, but we have it. CPU in a both ways working good, but Turbo hack is a free performance, so you definitely should use it. Thanks all for watching that video, I hope that it was at least useful for you, please subscribe on my channel, smash like and leave few comments. All useful links as always in description. See you in the next one.